it's finally the day, it's finally time. We've been talking about the Math Macarena and that you're going to learn it in the extreme near future and here we are. We are going to be learning the Math Macarena. I'm going to be going through the lyrics and here they are. Um, you should probably stop the video now and write down the lyrics. You don't really need the dance moves, those will come naturally once you do it. What you really need to um, make sure that you get in your notebooks are the song lyrics and of course this very important step first because you have to do this first if you've got mixed numbers you need to change those to improper fractions if you don't then you're good to go again this is what you need in your notes are the steps dance moves you can put them in there if you want or you can always refer back to this or like i said you'll remember the dance you know that imposter version you probably already know some of the moves Okay, so if we follow our steps as they were provided to us, um, we know that the first thing we're going to do is, we, well, we know we're dividing. So we're going to keep the first, so that means this one stays the same. Flip the second, so 1 over 2 becomes 2 over 1. So you see, keep the first, flip the second, then you multiply. And if you're doing the dance moves, you know that you've got you made an X in front of you. And even though we don't write the X for multiplication because we're in seventh grade now, we still know, we, we remember that sign for multiplication. Then we know we keep the top with the top. So that means that the top with the top and the bottom with the bottom. So when I rewrite that, I'm going to have three times two because that's the top with the top, and five times one, that's the bottom. Three times two, of course, is six. Five times one is five. Lastly, we reduce. So remember, five is smaller than six, so it's too little to hold it up. We say to ourselves, how many times does five go into six? Well, it goes in once, and one times five is five. Six minus five is one left over, and that's our answer to the first one is one and one-fifth. Okay, moving right along. We've now got four ninths times seven eighths. So we know that the Math Macarena starts out first we will divide. Well, if we're not dividing, we don't do that part. We go right to the multiplication because that is what's happening here. Straight to the multiplication. So we say now, now we multiply. Now we multiply. You can sing the first part, but you don't start doing anything until you get to now we multiply. And then of course, you should remember that we keep the top with the top and the bottom with the bottom. So the top with the top is four, whoops. <laughs> it's four times seven over nine times eight. Four times seven is 28. Nine times eight is 72. So hopefully you know your, your times tables. If not, that's certainly something you wanna be practicing. Now lastly, we reduce. So this one is going to reduce, but it's, it's not because the, the number on the bottom is smaller because, in fact, we can see it's bigger. So it's bigger. So now we say to ourselves, what goes into both 28 and 72? Well, I like to look at the fact that right here, I see that the 4 and the 8. What goes into both of those? Well, we know 4 goes into both of those. So I'm going to divide by 4 and see what happens. Divide by 4, divide by 4. 28 divided by 4 is, of course, 7. 72 divided by 4. Well, 4 goes into 7 once with 3 left over. 4 goes into 32 8 times. So my answer is 7 eighths. Next, there was a note in there. You know, if you have mixed numbers, you need to be sure to change them into improper fractions before doing anything else. So just as a quick reminder, hopefully you remember, but if not, in order to change this into a mixed number, I'm going to always go in this direction. 
I go clockwise, and when I go to, from 3 to 2, that's times, and then when I go over the top, that's multiple, uh, addition. So this ends up being 2 times 3, which is 6, and then 6 plus 1, which is 7. And the 7 goes right on top of the same denominator or bottom number, so it's 7 thirds. So I bring that back over here, and I've now got 7 thirds divided by 5 6. Now I've got my math macarena. It's so fun. I can't wait till we all learn the dance in school. Okay, here we go. 7 thirds divided by 5 6. Keep the first, flip the second. Now we multiply. Keep the top with the top. This time I'm going to go straight this way. Top with the top, 7 times 6. And the bottom with the bottom, 3 times 5. So 3 times 6, of course, is 42. 3 times 5 is 15. Now, here we go. We've got a number on the bottom smaller. It's getting crushed right now by that 42. Oh, no! What are we going to do? Well, we say to ourselves, how many times does 15 go into 42? It goes into it two times, because 2 times 15 is 30. 42 minus 30 gives us 12, so that's 12 left over, stays over the 15. That is a correct number, but hopefully you recognize that 12 and 15 share a common factor, which is 3, so I'm going to divide top and bottom by 3. So the 2 stays the same, 12 divided by 3 is 4. 5 divided by 3, or 15 divided by 3 is 5. So my answer here is 2 and 4 fifths. This is so fun. Remember the beginning of the year we talked about how fractions are always our friends? Hope you didn't forget that. So 3 and 3 fourths. That means I'm going to do, go in this direction. 4 times 3 equals 12. Bring my 12 down. I'm going around in this direction. Direction. 12 plus 3 is 15, so 15 fourths. So my first mixed number turns into 15 fourths times, got 1 and 5 sixths. 1 and 5 sixths. So 6 times 1, of course, is 6. 6 plus 5 is 11. So 15 over 4 times 11 over 6. Oh, goodness, this is a crazy number, huh? Well, lucky for you, we have a wonderful shortcut whenever we multiply times 11. I'm going to put this down here on the side. Whenever we multiply by 11. Now, we know both of those are 1s, so I can take that 15 and stack it on top of my other 15, but I'm going to scoot it to the side because remember that's really a 10. I put a nice wonderful zero here. So that's, I add these and I get 165. Look at that. So 15 times 11. Oops. Over 4 times 6. So, 15 times 11, I know we just found out, is 165 over 4 times 6. Oh. <laughs> I meant to actually multiply that. 4 times 6, of course, is 24. 24 is far too little to be holding up that big, giant 165, so what are we going to do about it? We are going to say to ourselves, how many times does 24 go into 165. I know what you're thinking. I can't possibly do that. That's too hard. Well, here's your reality. If I look at that 24, it's very close to 25. And that makes things far easier to um, deal with because if I kind of think about it like quarters, you know, 25 cents, there's four quarters at one dollar. Well, if I was going to make this into money, if it was a dollar 65, I would use six quarters, right? So that to me is going to translate into my 6. That's going to be a whole number of 6. 
Now it's not six quarters, it's actually six times 24. So six quarters would give me $1.50. This, each one is one less than a quarter. We've got six of those. So minus the six pennies would be 144. Okay? So six times 24. You're probably going to have to rewind this and listen to it again, and that is absolutely fine. Six times 24 gave me the 144. The reason I did that is because I need to know six holes when I pulled out six 24ths. I'm going to now subtract 165 minus 144. Five minus four is one. Six minus four is two. One minus one, of course, is zero. So that's my leftovers. That's gonna go on top. So I've got six and 21 24ths. I know that seemed kind of complicated, but rewind it if you need to. Certainly ask questions as well. Now, sometimes we're presented with, this is actually a division problem. It looks, oh my gosh, it's so scary because I've got a fraction up here divided by another fraction. Well, I can rewrite this so it looks just the way I'm used to seeing it, which would be 2 thirds divided by 4 fifths. Now we get to sing. Keep the first, flip the second, then we multiply. Keep the top with the top and the bottom with the bottom. So fun. Okay, 2 times 5 is 10. 3 times 4, of course, is 12. I know the bigger number is on the bottom, but I still want to reduce it. I know that certainly both of them are even, so I can divide both by 2. So that means that 10 divided by 2 is 5, 12 divided by 2 is 6. My final answer is 5 sixths. Next, I've got some weird things going on here, you're probably thinking to yourself, because I have these two, they look kind of the same, but they also look different. So if I take this, I know I want to multiply the top with the top and the bottom with the bottom. So it means it needs a bottom. It'll be 16 over 1. Top with the top, bottom with the bottom would give me 16 divided by 4, 16 fourths. That reduces to 4. And then look at this, 16 divided by 4. I hope you know that this is just 16 divided by 4, which is 4. I hope you see what I see. These are the same. Let's see if it happens again. 3 divided by 2. Well, that, of course, is 3 over 2. 3 times 1 half. I'm going to put this over 1. 3 times 1 is 3. Over 1 times 2 is 2. It happened again. I think that means it's always going to be the same. You can keep trying all different sorts of examples, as many as you'd like. But, of course, I'll guarantee you it's going to be the same. So the relationship that we want to make sure we notice is this 1 over 4, or 1 multiplying times 1 fourth, is the same as dividing by 4. Or multiplying by 1 half, is the same as dividing by 2. It will be the same every time. You should probably pause this video and write that down in your notebooks. Let's make sure it works out even when we have decimals. I'm betting that it does. Top with the top, bottom with the bottom, right? 27 times 1 is 27 over 3. That equals 9. Now this is 2.7 divided by 1 third. <laughs> Well, I'm sure that you can still hear my dogs way back in the background. Oh, here he comes. I'm pausing again. Okay, after that commercial break, I'm now back and on. So we've got now 2.7. 2.7 obviously is a very different number than 27. But if I look at it, and I simply for the time being ignore that decimal, pretend it isn't there, it's going to be exactly like this problem here. So I know that that's going to equal... 9. Whoops, that is crazy looking. That's going to equal 9. So now I have to deal with this one decimal place. 
Well, remember that our decimal is always after every single number. Remember the decimal's at the end, just like the period at the end of the sentence, right? And this one moved back one place. So this one has to move back one place. So right here is its new spot. It goes in that direction. So the answer is 0 0.9 or 9 tenths. Now I wanted to make sure that you understand that it isn't that you just move one decimal place. We counted that. So over here, if we did the same thing, 144 times 1 twelfth, remember that is the same as dividing by 12, is going to equal 144 divided by 12, which hopefully you know, again, your times tables, and know that 12 times 12 is 144. So the answer here is 12. Uh-oh. The answer here is 12. Okay. I had a little technical difficulties. That's okay. This is our last slide. Um, we're almost done. We're almost there. So again, we're going to transfer this information because 1.44 kind of looks like that. It's just that it's got two decimal places, one, two. So that would mean that I've got 12 and I need to move my decimal place. Remember, decimal's always at the end, like the period at the end of a sentence. One, two. So that means it's 0 0.12. And there you go. And next time you come to class, you ask me to show you the dance and we'll do it all together.